Hi guys, I'm going to show you how to make a movie poster in Adobe Photoshop CC. The first thing I'm going to do is change the name of the file to movie trailer one. Um, meant to be movie poster one, but that's okay. And make sure that it is A3 sized. In I have downloaded a few uh, royalty free images from Google just to use for this exercise and I put them in a folder um, and I'm going to use those to start. The first one I'm going to use is a background image of the city and I'm just going to make that bigger by holding down shift and dragging it up. That way it'll stay in proportion. If you don't hold down shift, just go wherever you're putting it and it'll ruin the um, resolution of the image. Once you're happy with that, uh, click on select tool, press place and then move it around as to where you want it to be, where it's best going to be. Once you've done that, that you'll see on the layers palette that it's its own layer. I'm going to lock that layer so I can't do anything to that because I want to make sure that that's there. The next thing I'm going to do is put in the next photo that I'm going to use. And I'm going to use this photo of the older man and I'm going to click and drag that in. That will come on its separate layer as well. And then I'm going to click and drag that where I want to be. I'm then going to use the erase tool and get rid of the background. You can change the size and all that sort of stuff up on the top on the left to make it bigger, to make it easier to rub it out. I'm using a feathered erase tool. That way um, you haven't got those really straight edges just because this has a lot of hair and straight edges is going to look really weird. So I'm going to do that for the entirety of this image until I'm happy with how it's going to be. You'd probably want to take more time than I'm taking to do this because you'd want your image to be looking as genuine as it can. So it doesn't look like it's kind of been placed there. Zooming in by holding down command and the plus uh, button can also help with this. Once I'm um, happy with that, I'm going to drag in the new image of the other man and I'm going to resize that again by holding down shift to make sure it stays in proportion and placing that where I want on the other side of the uh, paper. Remember clicking on the select tool to make sure it's placed into the document and then I'm going to figure out where it's best going to look in my poster. Again, I'm going to use the erase tool um, to get rid of the background. Again, you change the size, um, the diameter of your erase tool depending on how big you want it to be. I've made it quite big to get rid of the bulk of the background and made it a bit smaller when I got closer to the person. I did rush this a little bit and you'll find that once I've done um, erasing that it's a bit too blurred near the face. And what I really should have done is gone to the really um, clean circle in the erase tool and gone close in and done it that way. But I was rushing and that's not what you want to do. You'd want to take your time. Now I'm just resizing the um, picture of the other man just so it fits um, or looks a bit more in proportion with the first man that I put in because he was a bit too small and a bit further down. So I'm trying to get the eyes to kind of line up um, and get the chin in the right spot so they look like they're about the same size because they're both um, equally as important on the poster. Again, I'm going to go back to my folder and put in the photo, the last photo um, of people in and it's a picture of a man from behind so you don't see their face. And that um, man or boy is going to be uh, put at the front. So here's a key character in this film. Again, we are going to use the erase tool to get rid of the background. And you'll see that this time um, I have used kind of a larger diameter to get rid of the majority of the background, but then I've made it quite small and zoomed right into the edges to get around um, the boy to make it look like he is 100% in that um, setting. You want to make sure that you do do this, especially with something that's right at the front that's going to be kind of the main focus of the movie poster. So I spent probably about roughly 15, 20 minutes uh, erasing this character out, not at, 
at the start obviously where I've done it quite quickly but when I've zoomed in and gone through and really made sure that especially around the beanie where the light's a bit um, overexposed I did have to take a bit more time with that as well. Alright so once I've done with the erasing of the boy I'm going to put I've downloaded like a picture of um, just kind of mist or fog that I'm going to put over my carriage it's kind of make it blended in um, a little bit better as well that will kind of take away from the kind of um, softened edges so it'll look a bit more natural and hopefully tie everything um, a bit together uh, rather than have it look like they're kind of sticking out so when I drag that in that's going to be a separate uh, layer as well and I'm going to resize that quite um, big so again holding down shift because I don't want it to lose its proportion otherwise it'll look a bit weird I'm going to make sure that my layer is on top of all my other layers and then I'm going to use the eraser tool to get rid of certain portions of that so what's behind it kind of comes through but the fog kind of stays there so I'm rearranging it to where I want it to be I am going to reduce the opacity whilst I um I'm going to erase it just so I can see what parts I'm erasing and not getting rid of um, like the bits that are really obvious and I'm going to make my eraser tool quite big so I'm going to change that and just kind of click rather than um, hold down and drag it around. So I'm going to just click on the points that I know that I definitely don't want this fog to be so obviously on the man's face and his eyes is going to look a bit silly because there's like a mountain in that so I can't have that there um, whilst I'm doing that I'm going to go back and make the opacity of that fog layer a hundred percent so I can see what I'm doing because I've kind of got the bigger bits now and I do want to see a bit of the city in the background as well otherwise it's going to be um, a bit pointless to have the city there but you'll see that putting that fog in kind of helps a bit the boy at the front is quite important so I am going to make sure that you can see him quite well as well. You can go in and make your brush smaller. I've just kind of kept it roughly around the same size um, and again I'm only clicking once otherwise um, it's going to be a bit ridiculous. I also um, have changed the opacity of the brush so it's only um, getting rid of some of the back um, the fog rather than all of it from there as well which can also help blend it in. Okay so I'm just going to toggle between um, the layer being on and off and you'll see that that kind of how it brings it together so it makes it look better, um, ties it all in. I'm going to lock that layer again because I don't want anything to happen to it. So I'm going to go in and change, um, edit some of the photos individually I've gone in and I've changed the levels of my background of the city and now I am going to stay on that layer and change the saturation slightly as well. I don't want it to stand out too much. It's the background. I want it to kind of blend in, especially with the fog and things like that. So I've reduced the saturation of that. And I'm going to go back in and go to the color balance as well. I'm going to make it a bit more of a blue tone to my movie poster um, so I've done that with both the um, highlights and the mid-tones at the moment you can see that I'm not making massive massive changes um, just really kind of smaller changes so it's not like too extreme because if you do go too extreme it'll become way 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 too obvious but I do want this kind of blue tone and at the moment it's going to look a bit strange because everything else is a different color temperature but that's okay. So once I'm happy with um, the background I'm going to lock that layer again just selecting the lock there on the layers palette. Now I'm going to change the color temperature of the older man, the first one I put in but first I'm just going to double check the levels to make sure I'm happy with those because he is an important character as well in this movie that I'm making so we want to make sure that he stands out as well and it's not too oh, um, too bright. It was a quite bright image that I got from Google. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to go up and I'm going to go to color balance as I said before and I'm going to again make him a bit more blue, a 
bit more of a blue tone to him as well. Now I've got this other man to the right and I'm just going to check the levels of him, make sure, maybe increase the shadows a little bit you can see the difference by again toggling between the preview to make sure he matches the guy on the left and works well with the background because at the moment he was a bit um didn't have enough kind of shadow in him so now it looks a bit better i'm going to go to color balance he's already quite blue the image i got um, had a cooler color temperature to it so i don't think i need to do all that much with this um, only really slight changes, perhaps just to um, the shadows a bit more. I'm actually going into um, the fog layer now. Um, I'm happy with what that um, boy looks like, how it was. And now I'm going to the fog and you see that making it a bit more blue toned um, really helps tie it all together, that cooler temperature. I'm working in the shadows at the moment, trying to figure out what works best. I did add a little bit of red into it there just to see if that brings it makes it a bit warmer happy with that press ok lock that layer again now I'm back on the boy and I'm just going to the hue and saturation he's really quite um, vivid at the moment I'm just going to check if I just drop down the saturation slightly if that will um, kind of make sure he doesn't stand out all too much like I haven't done that much but I think that kind of uh, works well with what I'm doing and I'm toggling again with the preview just to make sure it's all okay so I think that looks quite good happy with that and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to save it I'm not going to put any of the titles in on uh, Photoshop because I want to use InDesign for that because I have a lot more options with text. I'm going to save that as a JPEG file and I'm also going to save it as a Photoshop file so I can go back in and edit it if I need it. You'll see that that's now in that uh, movie poster folder and that's what it looks like. So obviously we still need to um, work on some stuff. We need to add some text and all that sort of stuff. So we're going to be doing that in part two, which will cover how to edit the rest of this movie poster in Adobe InDesign.